My name is Lisa Victor, and I'm freshman class president. We would like to welcome all of you here tonight to the Soft Rush Joe and Eddie concert being held in conjunction with Soft Rush Week. It's become a tradition at UCLA that the freshman and sophomore classes declare a week in honor of themselves every year, in which they, uh, they sort of plan events which are educational, entertaining, and really sort of fun for all. This year, we were very lucky to have two excellent chairmen, Ron Javor representing the sophomore class and Lloyd Schwartz representing the freshman class. Ron and Lloyd will tell you a little bit more now about Frosh Soft Week. Uh, soft Frosh Week. <laughs> this year's Soft Frosh Week, and I say Soft Frosh Week, is different than Soft Frosh Weeks of the past in that we have added several events and have revised several others Overall, we feel this will be much more fun than weeks of the past. The week started yesterday on what was supposed to have been a serious note with a speech by the incumbent councilwoman, Rosalind Wyman. But as things go, it was followed today by a panel discussion of four of her opponents discussing her and the issues of the campaign. Tomorrow, we have a contest which we hope will become a tradition at UCLA, a bottle cap contest. Three cases of Pepsi-Cola and a trophy will be awarded to the living group or representative from the freshman or sophomore class, which can collect the most bottle caps and bring them to Bruin Walk, the judging area, tomorrow at noon. Uh, from past experience this week, I can say collecting bottle caps is a lot of fun. Now I'd like to introduce Lloyd, who will go on further in Frosh Soft Week. Friday, uh, Frosh Soft Week, we'll have um, the Junior Olympics, which you've all been waiting for. Now in these Olympics, in these Olympics, there will be events that have somehow been missing from other Olympics and everywhere else. Events such as the 25-yard uh, crawl, the 53-yard co-ed carry, and the pizza eat uh, for time with no hands. These events, these events and other events are on the applications available on Brune Walk. The, the day takes place Friday from 3 to 5. The trophies, the trophies will be available with the saying, world record. Because none of these events have, been take, have taken place anywhere else, each time you win one, it'll be a world record all your own. <laughs> so come Friday from 3 to 5 for the Junior Olympics. Because of the festivities that take place at intermission, we'd like to ask all of you to please take your seats as soon as the lights begin flashing. And for those of you ladies who live on campus, be sure and save your ticket stubs because they're your check to get back in for the extended lockout on which you're privileged to take part in tonight. Now, it gives me great pleasure to introduce to you those well-known folk singers, Joe and Eddie. Yeah. 
church chapel, let me ride. Swing down church chapel, let me ride. Rock me, Lord, rock me, Lord, down the very easy. I got a home on the other side. Thank you for such a warm welcome. We have had the good fortune to record six albums for Crescendo, the latest of which is called Join Eddie Live in Hollywood, recorded half at the Troubadour and half at a place called the Mecca in Orange County. From that album, we'd like to do our favorite song, written by Mr. Bob Dylan. It's called Fare Thee Well. Yes.
is against me and the wind blows hard the rain she's turning into hail i still might strike it lucky on a highway going west though i'm traveling a lonesome trail so it's fair he well my That's grieving me, but my true love is bound to stay behind. Well, I'll tell you of the laughter and the troubles. Be they somebody else's or my own. With my hands in my pockets and my coat collar high, I'll travel. So it's fair he well my own true love will meet another day another time it's not the living that's grieving me but my true love is bound to stay behind So it's fair he well my own Another time, another time, it's not believing, that's grieving me, but my true love is bound to stay
lord, lord, did you? He no back 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 did you? Did you hear me? Before we go any further, we should introduce the young, the two young men that make all this up here possible, our musicians. We are first of all on bass, a young man that we met about three months ago. We took him on tour with us the last time we went out and all tromped through the cold weather in the east together. He's become a very, very fast friend and he's an excellent bass player, Mr. Robert Kendall. rather suave looking character here. The right of us <laughs> has been with us considerably longer. Perhaps some of you are familiar with him. He does a lot of TV with us and he's also on the front, the cover of our latest album called Joe and Eddie Live in Hollywood. And we're very proud of Lewis because we think he's one of the finest young guitarists in the country who will undoubtedly do something on, do, do something on his own sooner or later, but we hope it's much later right now. In the meantime, <laughs> he's with us. He's from Little Rock, Arkansas, more recently from here in Hollywood, Lewis Junebug Shelton. probably heard the age of love story about Frankie and Johnny. It's a very tender and moving ballad involving these two queers, it seems. These <laughs> two queers. <laughs> Reminds me of a lovely love story. <laughs> these two flamenco dancers very much in love could not seem to make it in the terrible rough world that there is around today. <laughs> so in true inimitable true love style, they decided to commit suicide together and to each other. <laughs> so they went upon this high mountain, high up in the sky, where the dew drifts down from the low clouds. <laughs> and they wrote beautiful love notes to the world, expressing their love for one another and to the world to read after they had gone. And then in true flamenco style, they kill each other by stomping on each other. And right. <laughs> Terrible. And do you know, to this day, nobody knows why those two fellas did that. No, we just, they can't figure it out. <laughs> this song is called The New Frank and Johnny. It was given this new treatment by two young men. One, Mr. Shell Silverstein, who is, uh, and Mr. Bob Gibson is the other. These two young men are considered the leaders of the ultra hippie set here in America, whatever the hell that is. Right, One, nobody uh, knows, you know. Shell, <laughs> Shell, of course, writes uh, dirty cartoons for the Playboy magazine. Yes, and uh, <laughs> it does it well. Bob right. Gibson is a fine folk singer and songwriter, but he has been known to write a risque ski song or two. Or oh, three or four. <laughs> four this or guy's five. filthy, writes right. these songs. Wow, real winners. He knocks <laughs> off about six dirty songs a day, folks. Right, that's closer to what we're getting at here. Real dirty songwriter. Nice fellow, though. These two young men have collaborated to bring new life and vigor and enthusiasm and dirt yeah. and dirt yeah. to the tired old story of Frankie and Johnny. And they call it with a great deal of ingenuity and thought. How the hell's name is that? <laughs> oh, yeah. They call it the new Frankie and Johnny. <laughs> and it's obviously a story about these two new queers. Who but spend that's a lot of time. not really what the story is. Johnny and she loved him. Well, she laid down a hundred months through the clothes. I don't just see them. Just walking arm and arm down a long canal. Sweet Frankie loved Johnny, Lord. Everybody knows she really did. Yeah. Huh. 
She come home one evening, just a little bit early, and she thought, let me see now, I better stop at the corner of a bottle of So she sat down, and she told her story to the fat bartender, said, tell me fat daddy, have my jam man in here. Don't you lie. He said, the French daddy. Well, I'm terrible, so you ask me that question, you know, that I'm about as honest as a man can be. I saw you, Johnny. He was a walking down man, and a feeling no pain. Was a slipping and a sliding with a girl named Anna And I said, tell me that daddy have my jam man in here. here. Don't you lie. He said, the French daddy. Well, well, I'm terrible, so you ask me that question, you know. That I'm about as honest as a man can be. I saw you, Johnny. He was a walking down man, and I'm feeling no pain. Was a slipping and a sliding with a girl named Annabelle. He's like, these trouble folks, but he's now Frank She said, oh, no, no, that can't be so. Cause I know what you know, girl. I know a candy man wouldn't treat me wrong, so she said, So she pulled out And took the lead with that colorful pistol And shot that Johnny in the middle of his big affair Woo! Quiet, sweet ones. Yes, we'll have to keep more of those in tonight. We've been trying to think of ways to give uh, meaning and depth class to our act. <laughs> One of the eyes we toured around with was adding foreign language songs. We did? <laughs> and it's rather difficult, you know, because we really haven't done overwhelmingly well with English right, yet. That's, uh, <laughs> that's strange thing right there. But we're attempting to do this new thing, and uh, we have our first song ready for you now. It's a lovely little tune in Yiddish. Thank you, thank you. And we learned it at home. <laughs> Had a strikingly unusual girl. <laughs> Her name was Tizetna. To what now? It's a very, it's a very uh, calm song, serious song. Yes, a rather serene type thing, so we'd like you all to get into that particular mood so that you won't miss whatever the hell it is that's going on up here. Because we should... Hey! 
Sometimes cry. I gotta ease all my trouble. Mine on that sweet cherry berry wine. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. We'd like to do another new song from our newest album. <laughs> Uh, it's a song that is a victim of that wonderful and trusted, marvelous old pastime, censorship. Yes. <laughs> you know, the old ladies' leagues don't have anything to do. They sit down and say, what shall we censor this week? You know, don't tell them. <laughs> anyway, uh, censorship, as you all know, is when something is deleted out of context from a play or a song, what have you, because it's either suggestive or downright dirty. Yes. Uh, but the reason it's taken out is what interests us. It's taken out not because everybody doesn't know about it, but because nobody wants anybody else to know that they know right now. Yeah. You know, so 
Wait till tomorrow. <laughs> this song <laughs> is a victim of censorship uh, in much the same way. Uh, in its original form, it was frightening to people. You see, to some people, uh, it brought to, to mind uh, frightening thoughts, you know? So it had to be changed. It used to be called Ain't No Grave, and the lyrics went, Ain't no grave gonna hold my body down. You'll be standing by my grave, and I'll come breaking through the ground. And it frightened some people, you see what I mean? Scares the hell out of me, I'll tell you. That's a very weird thing there. But I don't have nothing against dead people until they come breaking out of the ground. Right. You know? It's time to hit them with a two-by-four or something, a brick right. or something. Run like hell or Scare something. Scare them. I don't, I don't think the mood of the song has been changed by our changing the words somewhat. It's just a song about a man who wants to live a full life. Yes, we call it Ain't No Way. Ain't no way You gotta hold my body down Ain't no way You gonna hold my body down I'd like to do a song written again by Shel Silverstein, of whom we made fun a few songs back. But uh, he is, in reality, a very talented uh, man. He's been successful at journalism and cartooning and songwriting, to name a few. God knows what else he's into. Uh, <laughs> this is a song that he has written that is in the protest, that is of the protest variety. Uh, it tells of the civil rights movement from like 115 years ago, and it gets the entire story into four or five verses. Uh, so it's very cleverly done, very good lyrics. For those, of us, for those of you who may be interested in writing lyrics sometimes, this is a masterpiece, masterpiece of lyric writing. So listen to the words, it's called Hey Nelly Nelly Miss. <laughs> Nelly, Nelly, look at what I see. He's 
riding in the town on a sway back mule. Got a tall black hat and he looks like a fool. But he sure is a talking like he's been to school. And it's 1853. What he's saying, hey Nelly, Nelly says it's getting late, and he says that all folks deserve to be free to walk around the same as you and me, and he's talking about a thing he calls democracy, and it's 1850. Hey Nelly, Nelly, hand me down my gun For the men are cheering and the boys are too And they're all putting on their coats of blue And I can't sit around here and talk to you Cause it's 1861 Hey Nelly, Nelly, now the fighting's over Hey Nelly, I've come home alive, but my coat of blue is stained with red, and the man in the tall black hat is dead, but we sure will remember all the things he said, it was 1865. Hey Nelly, Nelly, come to the window, hey Nelly, what I see, I see all kinds of people walking side by side, and they're walking in a column that's a century wide. It's been a long and a hard and a bloody ride in 1965. It's been a long and a hard and a bloody ride in 1965. Now my star is 
you back. We hope you enjoyed the first half of our program. We'd like to continue now by introducing those people who helped make last, last semester such a success. The freshman class officers and the sophomore class officers. Serving as freshman vice president this semester is Andy Lewis. Freshman secretary is Bobby Froyler. And Jill Goodman is our class treasurer. Working very hard for the sophomore class this year is our sophomore class vice president, Ms. Pris Flaster. Secretary is Kathy Wooten. Treasurer is Dave Kornblum. And chairman of this event, this concert, is Sue Kadner. Of course, as all of you realize, it takes far more than four people to run successful class activities with all the things that we've been doing and all the functions that go on. This year, the sophomore class has been very fortunate in having many fine people working for it and coordinating all our activities. We have selected 22 sophomores who we feel are fitting to be called outstanding sophomores. Because of their work they have done for this past semester and for the work they've done for the school, for the class, and for themselves. These people were selected not only for their participation in the sophomore class, but for their participation in school affairs, athletics, while at the same time keeping up their academic fairs as well. There was no specific number of people to be picked for this award. We just selected what we considered to be the cream of the sophomore class. And I think that you will agree with us that they are truly outstanding sophomores. So if Chris and Kathy will help me do the honors this evening, and if you will hold your applause until all the sophomores have been presented, we would like to present to you the 22 outstanding sophomores of 1965. Our first outstanding sophomore is Leslie Adler. Leslie is currently a Spur, a sophomore sweetheart, and she is Mardi Gras co-chairman. Next is Aviva Brunner. Aviva is Lower Division Women's Representative on Student Legislative Council. She is a sophomore sweetheart and was freshman class secretary. Dennis Kagan. Dennis is the homecoming executive chairman for 1964. He's the past president of Yeoman and is now chairman of the All University of California Distinguished Speakers Program. Joe Canelo. Joe is on elections board. He is on Spring Sing executive board and is in Sproul Hall honorary. Our next outstanding sophomore is Alan Kasdan. Alan is the sophomore Spring Sing chairman, a yeoman, and also the city high school chess champion. Dave Clark is Lower Division, Division Men's Representative on Student Legislative Council. He was on UCLA crew and is SLC's representative on Board of Governors. Bob Ehrlich, 65 Mardi Gras Executive Committee. He is homecoming exec on Homecoming Executive Board and is the Vice President of Yeoman. Mickey Groats. Mickey is sophomore spirit chairman. He was on sophomore homecoming committee and is a member of Yeoman. Our next outstanding sophomore is Ron Javor. Ron is the co-chairman of Soft Brush Week. 
He is a member of the tutorial project, and he's also on the finance committee. Eileen Cass was Mardi Gras 64 fraternity booth chairman. She is a historian of sophomore sweethearts and is a past member of Associated Women Students Executive Board. Jay Kenoff is now president of Yeoman. He is a tennis letterman and is also the assistant editorial editor of the Daily Bruin. Dave Kornblum was chairman of Mardi Gras Speakers Program in conjunction with publicity. He is on the varsity fencing team and received honors at entrance at UCLA. Art Levine is currently Yeoman's vice president. He is the chairman of the sophomore retreat and also was the head of the Oleo show, the group Salt and Pepper, who won the most humorous. Next is Jeff Marsh. Jeff is sophomore class art chairman. He is a member of Tutorial Project and has a 3-9 grade point average. <laughs> Kathy Marvin is our next outstanding sophomore. She is the sophomore art co-chairman and actually is our official sophomore class artist. Our wonderful Homecoming float was designed a great deal by her. The faces were done by Kathy, and they just worked tremendous, if you remember. Next is Andrea Miller, who is sophomore Senate secretary. She is ranked fourth player in tennis in the United States and is one of four UCLA students accepted to Crossroad Africa. Gary Miller is currently the Mardi Gras co-chairman for the sophomore class, plays intramural basketball, and is a yeoman. Nancy Norton was Fall Drive Candy Sales chairman. She is a sophomore sweetheart and a member of the sophomore senate. Another out, excuse me. Another outstanding sophomore is Norval Prakash. He is the sophomore class publicity co-chairman, an all-India hockey team member of 1963, and Hedrick Hall publicity chairman. He is our sophomore homecoming co-chairman. He is a varsity gymnastics member and a yeoman. Next is Pat Woody. She is president of Sophomore Sweethearts, is a past member of Bruinettes, and a member of Tutorial Project. Last year, the freshman class organized a freshman men's honorary spirit organization, which is known as the Frogs. Well, this year, I see we have some frog members. Uh, this year, the Frogs have initiated a new contest, which they hope to have become annual. And this contest is um, to select the girl who they feel will best fit the title, Miss Frog's Legs. And here to help, <laughs> well, <laughs> uh, here to help me make the presentation tonight uh, from Miss Frog's Legs 1965 is Norm Culler, the present president of Frogs. Thank you, Lisa. Uh, a word about the contest. Each contestant will walk to the back of a booth right here. <laughs> get a little water, get a little water which will reveal only the legs of each young lady. And now, our first contestant, <laughs> April Anson. She's sponsored by the Brunettes.
Next is Sheila, Sheila Hovey. She's from the Kappa Delta sorority, and she's military ball queen and army queen. Our next contestant is Jan Kammerman from Reber Hall. Next is Kathy Lupin from the Kappa Kappa Gamma Sorority. And our last finalist is Sue Walton, a member of Alpha Phi Sorority. The final judging uh, was held this evening at 7 o'clock, right before the concert. And now it gives me great pleasure to introduce Miss Frog's Legs for 1965. April Anson.
like to do a song now that takes place in the part of the country where Eddie and I were mostly raised, the San Francisco Bay Area. We'd like to dedicate it to any of you who might be from the San Francisco Bay Area, yes. or to others of you who have friends and or relatives up in the San Francisco Bay Area. Yes. And of course, to the remainder of you who are in sympathy with those of us from the San Francisco yes, Bay Area. <laughs> for various reasons, like there are more alcoholics foot for foot in San Francisco than any place else in the world. Yes, it certainly is. Needless to say, when Eduardo died, when Eduardo and I left, Quite a few feet were vacated right. from the drinking. No, that's not right. We don't drink very much. Anyway, alcoholism is not the problem of the young man concerned. It seems as though this young fella, yeah. coming to town, he wasn't bothering nobody, he wasn't looking for no trouble. Down by the Bay, San Francisco Bay is a rough area. And he come to town, and it seems as though he received the blues, along with a couple of other undesirable elements from this young lady yes, down by the San Francisco Bay. Pockets. I was down in the mouth. They locked me up and threw away the key. 
special thing for us because we did this on the premiere show of a man who has been very instrumental in the rise of our career. Speaking of Mr. Danny Kaye, we did his premiere show in 1963 and this is a song that a lot of people think is a folk song simply I guess because so many folk groups have done it but it really isn't. It's contemporary and from a Broadway play called Paint Your Wagon by Lerner and Lowe and it's called They Call the Wind Mariah. <laughs> they And in addition to being one half of the very fine singing team of Bud and Travis, is another one of the gifted young men who are writing things today that are being done by various groups. This is a song that Travis has written that's on an interesting subject. Uh, it has to do with sowing one's wild oats. <laughs> now that is a that's sort of a kick that everybody doesn't get to, get to get to. It's uh, 
It has something to do with finding oneself psychologically between the age of 18 and 25, 30, 35, 40, 50, 60. <laughs> kind of depending on how good you are at finding yourself, you know. <laughs> yeah. uh, the character in this song has gone through this sowing one's wild oats and uh, has never really matured. And he's, uh, he's older now, he's a little older, and he's starting to fear that he'll die after having done nothing throughout his life uh, here on earth. And uh, it's neither as comical or as confusing, perhaps, or somber as I make it sound, but told very well by Mr. Travis Edmondson in his song, I'm a Drifter, and sung equally well by my partner and sometimes friend, Mr. Eddie Brown. Thank you there, Joseph. <laughs> I'm a drifter, I'm a loner, and I've seen every village and town. I've passed by here and I'll die here, and some stranger will lower me down. I've envied the ships that sail out of your harbors and shared silent thoughts with your children and barbers sung to the stars while a jukebox was playing fought back the tears that come when I'm saying I'm a drifter I'm a loner and I've seen every village and town I've passed by here and I'll die here and some stranger will lower me down I've played basketball through the hoop of a barrel and struggled to learn how to swim. Though I once was a baby, sometimes I think maybe I only pretend I was him. I'm a drifter, I'm a loner. I've seen every village and town I've passed by here and I'll die here And some stranger will lower me down I've made love in your city to the poor and the pretty Thought myself lucky and smart And ended up lonely with nothing but only a song and a half of a heart Cause I'm a drifter, I'm a loner And I've seen every village and town I've passed by here and I'll die here And some stranger will lower me down And some stranger will lower me down and some strange will Bob Gibson thing that is again on our album. He has about seven or eight tunes on the album, so he should be real happy if it sells good, you know. Uh, this is a gospel type thing that he arranged, and it's called You Can Tell the World, and we'd like to have you join in with us on the verse part, uh, because it's supposed to simulate a, an old gospel type tent meeting uh, in a place where you want it to be, where a lot of righteous people are shouting and clapping and cleansing their souls uh, to go out and sin again tomorrow. Right. <laughs> So for those of you who are of a like mind <laughs> and want to cleanse yourself momentarily, <laughs> uh, join in with us. The verses go, my Lord spoke to you and me, and everybody said, yes, he did. Yes, he did. 
And if you watch Smiley over here, right. he'll be saying, do it, my way. do it his way. Right. Yeah. The yes, he did. Yes, he did. He's going to leave the yes, he did. And everybody really yell it out, you know, and Kamala spoke to you and me. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Just as if someone had done something. A few moments ago, I did a song written by Travis Edmondson, and now Joseph is going to do one written by the same person. This song is kind of beautifully sad, sad in that it's about death, but beautiful because it says beautiful things. As you'll see, uh, the person involved, uh, when he or she dies, wants to leave beautiful things behind, things we think everyone should want to leave. It's called The Things I've Saved. Joseph? You will be given a fair trial and then shot in the morning for your various crimes against society. I'm finally living after all. One last word. I don't want to holler down the hall. Everybody leaves something when he goes. Here's what I hope will stay Violets in springtime Starry nights in fall The sunlight on a summer's morning Love to warm the snowflakes fall The spark in the eyes of my sons 
yes, and secrets whispered by the sea. There's a countryside like a great cathedral, a place called home, a land forever free, forever free. This will be my last will and testament, be enough sound body and mind. This will be my last will and testament. These are the things I choose to leave behind. Here it is, my last will and testament. Testament. These are the things I choose to leave Say, Lord, what do you reckon? Oh, Satan did say, he said, turn back, young man, you're too young to pray. Too young to pray, too young, 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 young to pray. Well, there's, there's a meeting here tonight. I know there's a meeting here tonight. And I can tell.
Robert. Thank you. Thank you very much. Singing out, tear down the walls. Can't you hear the church bells ringing out? Give every man the chance to take his brother's hand. Tear down the walls. Tear down the walls. The music's everywhere. Thank you. 